All right, welcome back. This is chapter number five of the CSIS 2200 Managing an Information System. It's entitled Protecting Information Resources. Like chapter four, we're talking about privacy uh, and ethical issues. In chapter five, we're going to be looking at how to protect, again, um, information and where information can be breached. Now, as a, a user uh, using an information, a managing information system, it's very important for everyone to understand the basic security threats uh, that face people uh, when, when uh, using these systems because you will be in charge of a certain amount of data and access to that system and therefore you have a certain amount of responsibilities. So that's what chapter five is focusing on. We are going to look at some computer crimes, information in the information technology industry. How can you safeguard or what are the safeguards in computers and network security? What are some of the major security threats? There's a lot of questions on the quizzes in the midterm about major security threats. Uh, security and enforcement measures, like what we can do to mitigate these types of things. And then guidelines for a comprehensive security system. So those are the key uh, learning objectives of Chapter 5. So let's dive right into it. And let's talk about, you know, what are we what are we talking about here in, in Whenever you're using some kind of managing an information system or technology, uh, it can be misused by somebody else um, to access that information. And there's different ways we can uh, hopefully prevent that. So most companies, all companies, will have security measures in place. Just like they have physical security guards and physical security measures, they also have cyber security measures in place. Now, a couple of the, the main th uh, tools that they use are antivirus and anti-spyware tools. Now, with inside of Microsoft, you, you have access to this yourself. And if you want, you can open up your Microsoft, um, what they call the Windows Security. And if you just go into your search and go into Windows Security, now if you're using a Mac, uh, this probably will be different. But with most companies, most companies do use PCs. So this is what you probably see when you're working in the industry. So in as a Windows security, this is an operating system level security. This is from the user's point of view and you're accessing some kind of managing information system. There are different levels or tiers of security within an IT infrastructure setup. So all we're looking at here is you guys personally protecting yourself against intruders by um, mon by setting up your account protections, uh, setting up the data that's coming into your internet by creating a firewall, looking at all of the applications and your browser controls to make sure that there's nothing coming in through there. Then there's a, the device security, the actual hardware, and so on. There's a couple other ones that um, you can work on as well. So the point there was to show you that there's a tool out there, an antivirus, um, anti-spyware tool that's embedded into Microsoft to help prevent that. So I would encourage you guys to have a look at it. Make sure, of course, you have, um, you know, your account is set up. And you can also set up accounts with certain access rights. So if, if someone's logging onto your computer and they only are users, you wouldn't want to give them administrative rights, for example, in case that they were compromised and they contracted a virus. Now, this is an entire study. Uh, of security and there's people that go into this they get degrees in this and they get paid very well to do this so this course is it uh, is only focusing really around the users manage using a managing information system some kind of software tool and being aware of all the different possible threats and how you can mitigate that so this is one way you can do that at the user level all right so that's the um antivirus or anti-spyware and there are a lot of different tools out there in fact if some students want to go and use this as their category for their presentation for a managing the information system I would allow this and they could look at all the different uh, antivirus pro products that are out in the market and how they work to do their presentation and they're really focused around protecting your data the software the systems your email um, is the kind of the key focus behind that now, here's a, I've added this to the slide, and I, I put this in because I think it's, it's worth uh, students understanding that passwords are probably the, the number one thing that users can do to help prevent any kind of security breaches. And a lot of times when I ask students what their passwords are, 
or what not the individual password but how they they do passwords a lot of them recycle passwords they use the same passwords on multiple sites because it's hard to remember now uh that's a that's very problematic by doing that because we we log into very sensitive things like our emails our banks our social media etc and we don't want people going in there and looking at that stuff so what you can do is you can come up with a password algorithm and this is a way it's like a it's like a key where you can develop a key for a password that is you completely unique on every site you log into and you won't forget it and if you need to update it there's there's a mechanism for that so this is they call i call this a password algorithm and it's basically a step-by-step -step structure uh, to developing the password and if you follow this with all your passwords then you'll never forget a password and they'll be completely secure here's how it works every time you log into either an email a bank or social media there's going to be some kind of common trait like there's a domain name like if it's gmail or it's uh, cibc or if it's facebook or whatever there's always going to be a name of, of the domain so that's a unique trigger that you can incorporate into your password uh, algorithm now the second part of the algorithm is to pick some kind of favorite keyword that you use all the time for every single password so it could be some kind of like a some people use their pets names or they use a, a family name or a birth date or something like that they use all the time so let's say the word is flower and then you want to select a non alphanumeric symbol a lot of websites require this now because it's the algorithm or the the hacking tools require this they, they like to have 12 characters with an uh, upper lower alphanumeric with a special character and a number so if you pick a non uh, numeric number symbol uh, this would really help now here's how it works you, you can catenate or join together the domain name with your keyword with the symbol and a number so for example if you want to log into your gmail account it would be gmail flower pound or percent sign one now you can you can put these in any order order that you want and also you'll probably want to capitalize one so you could say that the first character is capitalized or maybe your your hidden word is capitalized or maybe the second character of your hidden word is capitalized you can come up with a variation to your own algorithm to develop a key and that way any site that you log into now you've got your key so if you log into your facebook now it's facebook flower percent one now in the future they may want you to change your password well you just type in facebook flower percent two and you're incremented so if you log in or forget your your password you can start off with a one if that doesn't work you can try two etc now you can reorganize these in any any order that you want come up with your own key for your password and if you follow that you probably won't forget your passwords and they'll be quite secure now there is a security flaw in all systems and the security flaw is if somebody hacked your site and they read this they may be able to extrapolate that you've got a password key by they, they might recognize the word gmail that was they hacked the gmail server and then they see this keyword at this and they may figure out that you do have a key but it's probably more unlikely than not it's better than using the same password over and over anyways i wanted to share that as a security option for passwords all right now let's look at the cost of cyber crimes in the united states now the, the cyber crime because you you all will be working in a, in a in a company that has these managed information systems you are kind of a gatekeeper in a sense and if it's if it's breached through your uh, access um you know there's a cost to that there's gonna be a cost to you and there's gonna be a cost to your company now i put in some links into these slideshows and i would encourage you guys to try them and let me just open up my link here and the first one i think i did was this one right here this is the, the cost that it you know a study that was done by cybercrime and how much it costs companies so companies realize that this is a constant attack there's there's, there's people out there constantly trying to access data douglas college is attacked all the time we and i i get i get phishing attempts on a regular basis and recognizing phishing attempts can be very difficult and without being um, aware of it it's easy to fall a victim to this and it shows you how much um you know what are the most common or prevalent malicious w software called malware malicious software is probably the well is, it's got the highest cost here 
web-based attacks. And we'll go through these uh, as in this class here. So these are all the different kind of main categories of cyber attacks uh, that, that can occur. So uh, you guys can have a look at that and see what they're And what are they going for? What are hackers going for? Stolen identities. Well, if they get someone's identity in the company, they can go in and log in and look around. And a lot of times they go in and look around. They don't touch anything. They don't alert anything to, to their presence because they're looking for some kind of intellectual property, uh, some trade secrets, some some intel. Maybe the company is going to go public in an IPO or maybe it's already trading on the stock market and they're talking about a major lawsuit that's coming up. That's variable, that valuable information for sure. And of course, this will definitely hurt the reputation of a company if they're hacked. There are so many cases out there where companies get hacked and then people don't trust them anymore. Uh, one of the most common one is Equifax. Equifax is the company that stores all of our financial credit scores. So if you're going for a loan, you, they, they, they look up in Equifax to see how your credit is doing. All of that data was stolen. And if you Google Equifax lawsuit, currently you can actually put in a claim um, against the company for damages as an individual because most people in North America have been compromised and there could be some damaging effects to that. that it, our information is out there in the hands of hackers right now. All right, uh, companies are spending a, a, a tremendous amount of their money and resources to put in secure cybersecurity, uh, network security. And this is a very um, well-paid industry. In fact, uh, we have a program at Douglas that, that teaches network security. Uh, it's, it's just such a, an important, in fact, your LinkedIn learning is gonna be on cyber, on network security, because I really want you guys to, to understand what's behind network security because you're going to be working in a company you need to work with these people and understand and even something as simple as recognize a phishing um attack on on the company opportunity costs associated with downtime the loss trust you know it, it's overall it's just terrible for the business so anytime a company has had some one of these attacks and something's happened it it devaluates the company and they lose value so they put a lot of resources in this area to, to help prevent that now some of the more common ways that they do attack these are some of the terms that they're going to ask you on the quizzes midterm like this you know maybe explain what type of attack would would some uh you know would would spyware be you know what is spyware what's an example of spyware so spyware is pretty uh, pretty malicious because it's basically watching somebody while they're working and it's basically taking your screen and broadcasting it on someone else's screen so they can record it they can look at it later and they can start looking and sifting through to see if they can find things now there's a lot of tools out there uh, that you can actually download to get spyware tools uh, this is probably one of the most common tools out there it's called Wireshark. Now I've tried this myself and what it does is it's a it's a network a, like a Wi-Fi network packet decryptor. So what it does is it you can sit with the laptop in, in a Starbucks and basically look at the unencrypted data going from people's laptops to the router and see things like um, if, if they don't can have a, a, ser a secure connection they um, you can actually watch them. And that's why they say never do any banking or any of that kind of stuff in, in an open Wi-Fi network because people can actually go in and, and watch you do that. Now, I put in another link here for, this is a tool that you can actually purchase off of eBay. And this is uh, an actual hacking tool. Like uh, you see these on you know movies where you just slip this into someone's computer and this will basically... Um, repeat or it'll send out broadcast information about what the computer is doing so if as someone is typing in that information is being broadcast to someone close by and you can actually spy on them so this is an actual spying tool so i'm showing this to you not so that you can do it of course i'm showing you this so you can be aware of this type of technology all right adware now adware and, sp and spyware there's there's a bit of a crossover between these two because sometimes adware um is trying to advertise something to you. They're trying to collect information about you to try to sell you something. But sometimes they can have malicious um, intentions. Um, now, you can help prevent yourself from doing that by simply going into something like your Chrome browser and putting an extension for your ad blocker. 
I'm sure most of you already have an ad blocker. There are some downsides to ad blockers. Like if you take the academic integrity um, uh, module at Douglas College, you have to turn off your ad blocker because it doesn't show certain videos. It's just the way that they it works. But you know, I think it's worth. I have an ad blocker on because I don't like to look at uh, a lot of pop up ads that that, that uh, infiltrate my computer. All right, here's a couple more here. Uh, phishing. Phishing is probably one of the most common attacks that I get at Douglas College. People are constantly just trying to fish. They call it phishing because they're just putting out there, uh, you know, a hundred hooks, and they're trying to get people to take the bait. So they'll write an email, and I got one recently that said that the president of Douglas College wanted people to log into their accounts and double check, and I'm sure a lot of of people did that but it was a completely fraudulent site now phishing and you, I, here's a site right here that I used I tried to go to and it was actually it's been blocked so it, if you've got uh, somebody has sent me this website said go to this website and type in your information you're basically giving hackers your information so the easiest way for them to to collect your information and what happens is um, people alert phishing sites and then the host shuts them down and that's what's happening there so at douglas at douglas college it we're man, mandated to actually take training on how to identify and recognize phishing it's so serious that they get every single user in the college to take an anti-phishing awareness class and that's this one right here if you guys want you could probably try it i'm not sure if you guys will have a, an access to the account because i think it, it's a paid um, course but it gives you an idea of that they want people to be fully aware of it. Now, here's another kind of odd thing I found. So google.ca with an extra O. Now, this is really interesting because when I open this site up, um, my my security alert, thank goodness, was was prompting me to say, hey, this there's something wrong with this site. Do you still want to do this? So it's telling me um, to be aware of this site. Do you still want to proceed? Or do you want to view the cert certificate? Now, the certificate is what they call... The, the SSL, that secured socket layer of data communications between my computer, the client, and the server that I'm trying to connect to. And it's basically telling me here who the issuer is of the certificate and should I trust it. And it, it kind of looks correct. So I'm going to say yes, even though this could. And it did. It actually crashed my computer. So what happened was it actually started opening up multiple copies of Chrome. And it wouldn't stop. So I had to go into my control alt delete. I had to go into my task manager and I had to open up this Chrome. And you, you can see what happened here. It's already opened up 58 tabs. And it's probably good. Yeah, there it goes. And it's probably going to crash my computer. Look at this. So there's an example of m malware on my computer. So I just crashed my computer. So the only way I can get rid of that, and what happens is it just keeps increasing and increasing until my memory uh, fades out and it just locks my computer down. So it's malicious. So I'm going to simply click on it and say I want to end the task. Okay, so I'm going to say here. Oops, so I'm going to go back up here, click on that, and I'm going to say end the task and take out that malicious site right there. So don't, if you guys want, you could try it out. It's Google with an extra O, and that's a malicious site. Now, we could go in there and we could actually find out who owns that site and 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 track them down because they somebody bought that and they registered it and they put up the malicious site. So I've done a lot of that. It's, it's a lot of fun to go back and research who that is. All right, baiting and click baiting is similar to phishing attacks. Uh, baiters get some kind of like a recipient, a, some kind of a promise, uh, a, something interesting that they want. To try to get them into it like you'll see these all the time you go to these uh, especially if you get on things like these illegal sites uh, like torrent sites there'll be pop-ups and oh try this out you're gonna those type of sites are riddled with viruses riddled with um, phishing and p spy sites and i just showed you this one right here that's a perfect example of a site it's more of a malicious site they weren't really baiting me on that one quid Pro quo, quid pro quo, I think it's Latin, means you give me something, I give you something. So it's kind of an exchange by hackers. Like I've hacked the site, I've got a bunch of data, you got some other data, I'd like to have that, let's just swap. And this is where hackers kind of work together. And I'm not sure where, I'm not sure where these guys get together. Maybe it's on the dark web. They use that onion router to, to communicate. I'm not sure how they do that. I haven't ex 
I haven't really gone into that one. So SMS phishing is another one. This is on your, uh, you know, your text text being. You, sometimes you'll get these messages that'll pop up. Uh, they want you to download an app or something like that. Um, I did have a link here, and I think recently the college has taken it off, so I'm not sure why. But there was a little bit on SMS uh, phishing. You get these on your on your phone. I, I'm not sure if you've ever had messages. I get these from my my phone company. They send me a lot of SMSs. Uh, and I just ignore them for the most part. Voice over IP. Uh, voice over IP protocol is another way of, of phishing. This is very common, and, and right now Canada is being attacked heavily by these robocalls using a VoIP technology where they'll say that the um, Canada Revenue uh, Agency is going to file a criminal charge against you unless you send the company uh, $3,000 in Apple cards. It's so, it's so bizarre. I'm not sure why anybody would actually do it, but this is a very uh, common... I. I actually like to talk to them. I, I call them. I usually push one and I say, hey, so what do I, well, what's the deal? And they tell me, oh, yeah, well, they look it up. And it's so funny, um, these things. Anyway, uh, CBC, this has been on the news. The RCMP has been involved with a lot of this stuff because it's, it's, so, it's so bad. Um, and uh, anyway, I've, I've got this on another browser here, so it's uh, not working right now. But if you guys try it out, there's a CBC... Um, voice over IP phishing attempt. Another one for Revenue Canada. Most of you probably have gotten that phone call already. Uh, if you haven't, this is a, another one. Um, this is a YouTube video that I had about, um, you know, being able to hack into a computer. This is an old movie that when computers first came out that, um, you know, people have been hacking since computers first came out. And if you're interested, it's an old movie. It's a great movie. Uh, it's a link to, um, called war games and uh if you ever want a little nostalgic movie on computers it's not a bad one to, to watch now the keystroke logger as I, I showed you earlier that ebay little um U usb dongle allows you access to that so i think um that's a really uh easy tool but there's software tools that you can just download people can download a software onto a computer and have it email or live connect to another computer and show exactly what you're typing. So if you're you're texting people, that information can be actually copied and sent to another computer or another phone using these key loggers, which is pretty um, scary to say the least. Because all basically your your most private social interactions are being logged, recorded, and sent to somebody else. So think about when you're texting and who you're texting to. Would you want that out? Um, in somebody, you know, some random person's um, hands. Who knows what they're going to use it for, of course. So, you know, what I'm, why I'm saying this is, is be aware of it. Now, here's a couple of uh, key loggers. I'm not, I mean, you could easily Google this stuff. So it's not a matter of me, um, you know, uh, let's see here. I think this is the key. Yeah, test 10, 10 best key loggers for spying. So you can install this on someone's computer. And they don't even know it's on their computer. It doesn't show up in their uh, task list. So that is not a very uh, secure. Yeah, there we go. All right, here's a USB logger. This is the one I just showed you on eBay. So I won't show you that one again. Uh, password security. I think I, I already told, I just told you about my, my option of password security. But there is a link here talking about you know, password security and what you might want to consider doing. Uh, and this is just another way of, of looking at password security. You can also type in your password and see how long it takes a computer hacker to hack your password. So if you typed in password one, two, three, it's very weak and it wouldn't take any time to, to, to hack that. But let's see here. If we make it really long, it could take 10,000 years. <clears throat> so this is kind of a neat um tool for you to check out your own password so again i'm going to go capital password all right now let's type in uh, let's try my password let's go with uh, uh gmail uh flower pound sign one so it would take a hacker five days to hack my algorithm so that gives you an idea. Hackers probably aren't going to bother with you because they're not going to spend five days of computing power to just to hack that one account for, for you. But if you type in password123, 
it literally takes zero seconds to hack that. So I think that's a, a good thing to be aware of. So make sure you check your, your security. All right, I'm going to cut it off there. It's 25 minutes, and I will pick this up in part number two.